Hello, my name is Jean Helms and I am the Administrative Director at the Unitarian Church here in Lincoln, Nebraska. And it is my pleasure today to um, welcome Nicole Palmer. She works um, over at the Friendship Home and Friendship Home is our Share the Plate recipient for July 2020. So I'm gonna give Nicole the floor and let her tell us a little bit more about her work with Friendship Home. Thank you so much, Jean. Um, I am Nicole Palmer. I am the Assistant Development Director at Friendship Home. I have been involved with Friendship Home for about five years between being a volunteer and a staff member. I've been on staff for about three years. I do a lot of public speaking. So these are uh, new to me with the Zooms, but um, I am usually out in the community quite a bit. And then I also do our event planning. So some of our bigger events like Stuff the Bus and Safe Quarters, you will see me um, behind the scenes um, on camera for that as well. But just to tell you a little bit about uh, Friendship Home helps victims of domestic violence find physical and emotional safety. One of the things that that people don't always think about is domestic violence is not always physical abuse. It's not always something that you are going to see when your coworker is sitting next to you. Sometimes it is, and it's also hidden. It's also emotional abuse. And so Friendship Home is there to help these victims find safety from both the physical and emotional um, abuse. We offer safe emergency shelter as well as crisis services. So not everybody that calls our crisis line comes into shelter or is seeking shelter. Many people are, but many people are just looking for services and questions, whether it be for them or be a family, a family member um, as well. Something else that we like to talk about is that victims come from all walks of life male, female, professional, unemployed, teens, senior citizen. There is no certain age group. We also, and in my presentation today, I may talk about women and children, but um, we wanna let you know that Friendship Home is set up to serve men and has served men in the past. We do not discriminate from anyone that needs our services at Friendship Home. Also something that's important for people in our community to realize is that st statistics show in Lancaster County that one in four women will be uh, a victim of some sort of emotional or physical abuse um, in in her lifetime. And then another fact that people find very interesting is last year we served almost 1,500 victims of domestic violence, and that does include children. Of the numbers that we serve in shelter, typically 60% are actually um, children. And that's something that people don't always realize that we do have some of the youngest victims have seen and heard what's going on um, in their household. And we have children's advocates on staff to work with those victims. Why um, their mother is in court group at Friendship, at Friendship Home. A typical stay at Friendship Home is six to eight weeks. And again, in that stay, we're offering crisis services. We're trying to help families rebuild their lives. But as most of us in this audience, including myself, would realize that uh, six to eight weeks is not a lot of time to rebuild a life. If you left everything that you had and, and came to Friendship Home with literally the clothes on your back, it's anything from receiving some counseling for the trauma that you've been going through, that your children have been going through. But it's also maybe getting a driver's license, tracking down your birth certificate, finding new housing. And those are all things that Friendship Home can provide help with. But six to eight weeks is not always enough time for many of the people that we work with. One of the things that we're really proud of and we're always building on is our transitional housing program. So we have three different forms of shelter. What most people probably think traditional is the communal shelter, but we also have single family shelters. They're spread throughout the city and our, tra our transitional housing and transitional housing allows victims of domestic violence more time to either build their lives. So it can be up to 24 months that they're able to work with an advocate at Friendship Home. Again, receiving crisis services. We have a financial empowerment class that we are able to offer our residents. We're also a strengths-based organization and I'm I'm really proud to talk about that. Many people are familiar with the Gallup Strengths Finder. Women and uh, children of a certain age have the opportunity at Friendship Home to take the Gallup Strengths Finder and find what their strengths are. We have to keep in mind some of the people that we are serving have been told their whole marriage or their whole partnership um, that they're worthless, that they're stupid, that they're a horrible mother. and. To see how much they're uplifted by seeing what their strengths are, like if their strengths, you know, is communicating, 
um, or empathy. Uh, it's it's one of the most one of the things that I'm most proud of that Friendship Home um, offers, um, and I like to share that. The crisis line is answered 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days out of the year, and I can't stress enough that it is always confidential. And then people will ask, how do people hear about us? Yes, we do have a website. We are in the phone book, but we do not have a physical address, obviously, for safety and confidentiality. We have a great partnership with Lincoln Police Department, with area hospitals, with Lincoln Public Schools, churches and pastors in town who do refer um, victims of domestic violence to our crisis line. That's how many, many people um, hear of us. Every day, every day, our staff, whether it's our development team or our programming team, is basically bringing awareness to the community. That's one of the most important things that we can do. And it's just also empowering freedom from domestic violence. For, for those victims out there that haven't heard of us, that, that don't know it is safe, emergency shelter. We are the only safe emergency shelter in Lancaster County for domestic violence victims. And I just thank you for learning a little bit more about Friendship Home today. And I look forward to answering other questions that you may have. Thank you so much. That really told me a lot about the organization and, and what it what part of the population it serves. I was interested to hear that you do serve uh, men and probably non-binary, uh, non-gender specific individuals, because of course there is a stereotype that um, it's just women or women and children that are using these services. So that's really interesting to me. Mm -hmm. I also, I did know that you were an emergency center, but I did not know about the longer term transitional housing. And I'm guessing that's a part of the program that has grown over the last few years. I, I have a few questions, I guess, just about yourself. First of all, as how how long have you worked for Friendship Home? Did you say three years? Yes. So this coming November, it'll be three years that I am on staff okay. for Friendship Home. I started with Friendship Home. I I was part of a sorority way back in college. That was you know over 20 years ago. I'm going to age myself, but I was part of an alum group, and I was a president of an alum group. And for me, one of the proudest things that I I can ever say about being Greek because it doesn't always have a positive persona in the community. But one of my most favorite things was philanthropy. And so I thought, you know, after college, I wanted to continue with that and let people know what wonderful things that we do in the community. And so we were doing an event and I incorporated Friendship Home into that event. I said, if you're oh. coming out to the event, bring a supply. And these are the things that Friendship Home needs. And at the time, and it's still this way, you know, diapers, paper products, cleaning hygiene products. products. Yeah. Yeah. Hygiene products. And so we had a wonderful turnout and I called Friendship Home to get this donation to them, took it to them, took it to an alumni, which was just, you know, funny that she was also a sister of mine. But after that, I received a call just thanking me for the donation. And we started talking about my background in nonprofit. I have worked for two other nonprofits before, and I have a marketing degree. They asked if I would want to become a volunteer and, 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 and serve on a committee. And I said, yes. Um, and I did that for about two years. And then two years in, they said, you know, you worked for the, I've worked for the Multiple Sclerosis Society in mm -hmm. Omaha, and I worked for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in Omaha um, as well. And they knew my background and asked if I would want to come part-time um, working for Friendship Home because I was working at home as a mom at that time. And I said yes. And again, that was three, um, three years ago. And it's been such a wonderful experience to work with the community. We have a fabulous community that supports Friendship Home. Yeah. Yeah, I have a lot of respect for Friendship Home. And I've had uh, friends who have utilized the services. And I've also had friends that have worked there that that really enjoyed the work environment and so forth. That's interesting. And you answered one of my questions about working for other nonprofits. I find that a lot of people who, uh, once they start working for nonprofits, it sort of gets in your blood, you know, and it's its own universe, isn't it? <laughs> it, it is, it is. We, we talk about that a lot, that um, there's a lot of com commitment. I think there's a lot of emotion that, you know, we see, you know, every day from us and what we experience, but also from what we hear from our victims. But there's a lot of reward from that when we know exactly. that, you know, we are um, changing lives and saving lives every day. Yeah. Well, I guess, um, you know, the question of the hour is uh, also just what has been your biggest challenge during the pandemic? 
you know what, I'm going to answer that on a programming side first, and then I'm going to answer that on a development side. Um, programming side, Friendship Home um, typically has a waiting list every single day. So on average, when I was going out and doing presentations, I would say, you know, we have 138 women and children in shelter today with 37 on our waiting list. And then I would talk about what we're doing, why we are, you know, we're still serving them, why they're on our waiting list. But there was a few weeks where we weren't receiving a lot of phone calls during COVID that there was, I, I can't remember if it was um, hours or, you know, a day or two days where we didn't have a waiting list. And that hasn't happened in years and years and years. And so I would think typically you would be like, oh my gosh, that's wonderful, right? But we knew it was because of COVID-19. You know, we knew that sometimes someone's chance to call us is when their spouse went to work. Mm -hmm. And with so many of us either losing our, our job or working from home, our, our victims are isolated. They just don't have a chance to call us. So I think that's one of the hardest things is that we know the victims were still out there. Our waiting list now is has gone back up. I think it's interesting for me personally that as things seem to open up a little bit more in the city, you know, our waiting list now has increased. Again, we are still serving people that are on our waiting list to, to seek um, safe emergency shelter. On our development side, I handle a lot of our in-kind calls and our donation drives. So I received a lot of calls saying, hey, we had something planned, but now we're not having services or our organization, you know, isn't meeting or our club. And so, you know, we knew there were some changes there. Um, we also have our annual Stuff the Bus event, which typically would take place in April. And we partner with StarTran and Alpha Media and Walmart and Sam's. We had to postpone that event. And those four StarTran buses that fill with hygiene items and uh, ethnic hair care and diapers and you know everything that you can imagine from when you wake up in the morning to when you go back to bed at night to get through your day those almost lasted us not quite a year but almost a year and so we're into almost July at that event yet so we're having to come up with different plans because we do want to keep all of our volunteers safe and the community safe. Well, that leads really, really nicely into my next question, which is just aside from uh, monetary donations, which is part of the reason that we're doing this share the plate is to share some, some financial help with y'all. What are other ways that people can volunteer? Do you want to talk a little bit more about, you know, maybe some of the bigger, bigger things like um, safe quarters, but also yeah. are there other volunteer opportunities? I'm not aware of whether there's safety issues with volunteering and I'm sure it's limited to some degree to yeah. certain events. I'll address COVID and then non-COVID. With COVID, yes, it has been a little bit more difficult. I will tell you that currently we have some outdoor um, work available. If anyone has a green thumb, or even if they don't and just say, hey, I'm great at raking, that's okay too. But we do have plants and trees and shrubs at our um, communal location and, and at our service center. And so we have been looking for volunteers. A lot of times it's families because they're already staying together. And we even ask if they wanna bring their own tools so that they don't have to share tools with someone that was just in. So that is actually an ongoing need for our events, um, because we're having to change things and stay tuned to friendshiphome.org and you'll see what some of our future plans are. Some of that, just people volunteering time to share our social media posts or send out an e email. Stuff the Bus is looking different this year and um, Safe Quarters is an October event, so we're not exactly sure, but that may be a request of social media, things like that. Our in-kinds and drives right now um, are on hold just because of drop-offs and things like that. But typically when it is not um, COVID-19, we have people that make meals for us, frozen meals, and bring them in once a week or every other week. We have people that sign up to be mentors for some of the children that we have in that transitional program that I told you about. There's a little training involved, and again, that's on hold right now, but that will be coming back, you know, hopefully, um, hopefully soon. And then just our events. We couldn't do our big events like Stuff the Bus, Safe Quarters without the community. So for now, again, it might be posting and sharing, but in the future, it would be people that want to help at the event or help with a team for, okay. Um, okay. for one of those. So, uh, so I just to make sure that I understand, because people will ask me. <laughs> 
you recommend keeping an eye on the website and Facebook page to A, make sure that safe quarters, uh, when it's happening right now, uh, we're not sure, but it usually happens in October. And as far as the stuff, the bus, that may also still happen, but it's still up in the air to decide for sure what month or what yes, date. And okay. The goal for, for stuff, the bus is a little bit sooner. We're hoping for end of July. That's okay. really the goal. This can't give a specific date right now, sure. but um, if people would go to friendshiphome.org, there's a, a tab called Give Help. And our events would be listed um, Great. under under those. There will be hopefully an option to do some things online. But again, even just sharing it is important. I always say we're all in a different place in our life on what we can help with. Some people it's treasure, some people it's talent, and some people it's time. Exactly. So hopefully there'd be something that would fit. Yeah, exactly. Well, you know, we've been uh, supporters of Friendship Home for many, many years and um, have had a good relationship. And I really admire your work and I wish you the best in getting through this this strange time that we're in. We look forward to have, you know hosting you in person again next year. <laughs> but uh, in the meantime, I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview and let us know more about what you have coming up. And I guess I just want to close with, is there anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't touched on? Uh, Jean, I just, again, thank you so much. The community in, in Lancaster County is a uh, fabulous. And when people say, you know, what, what can we do? Uh, awareness, awareness of what we offer for the that victim that needs our services. And then everything else I think follows. When people know what we do, um, they know we're safe shelter. They know what we might offer for volunteering. And for those that want to be a donor, they know what we do and that their money is is helping save and change lives every day. Great. Well, thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Jean, thank you so much. You too. Thanks. <laughs>